Mercedes-Benz isn't a complete novice when it comes to plug-in luxury, but where the limited availability B250e and the Quick Fix EQC dipped a toe into the electrified waters, the EQS does a cannonball. The Mercedes EQS is the first new from the ground up EV from the automaker since the advent of internal combustion, and it promises to be one of the most important vehicles in the company's history, doing battle with the Porsche Taycan, Tesla Model S, and Lucid Air with that blend of style, performance, and technology that we've come to expect of the three-pointed star. We'll have more information coming soon, so if you want to keep updated on the EQS, be sure to hit subscribe on the Motor One YouTube channel. But first, let's dig in a little bit more and learn about this gorgeous modern machine. Now, even though this is a fully electric vehicle, Mercedes wanted it to maintain some of that proud family tradition. So they did give it this grille motif up front. Behind this smooth piece, of glossy material, you can see a bunch of tiny little three-pointed stars engraved in the surface underneath. It also gives the three-pointed star in the center a very proud, very obvious place to stand out and say, I am a Mercedes-Benz. Additionally, Mercedes saw fit to give it three little lighting accents on the headlights, tying it in with the rest of the S-Class family, the S-Class sedan and the GLS SUV. They say that this is going to be a flagship motif in the future, that you're gonna get three lighting elements on every S-Family vehicle, but since it's also an EQ, you get a big full-width light bar running across the front. You're gonna see that on every EQ-Family vehicle from here on out. We need to talk about these 21-inch wheels. 20-inchers are standard, 22s are optional, and I think this is the perfect sweet spot for this vehicle's proportions and stance. First of all, they're a multi-spoke wheel design, which isn't very special in and of itself. Everyone and their mom has done a multi-spoke wheel, so, you know, how are you gonna elevate it a little bit? Mercedes EQ took up that challenge with this extra circle just inside of the wheel's diameter. And if you step back, you can see that it perfectly frames the, uh, the brake disc on the inside. I think it matches the stance of the vehicle perfectly, and they've done a very good job with this design. Like the Mercedes S-Class, this features flush-mounted door handles that pop out at the press of a button. And like the Mercedes Maybach, they also pop open and present the interior for you. That is such a cool feature. If you have the key fob in your back pocket, the door will actually pop open as you approach the vehicle, allowing you to merely step inside and you're on the way. The EV will come with only one battery option, a massive 107.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion unit that drives the rear wheels on the EQS 450 or all four wheels on the EQS 580. Mercedes says to expect 770 kilometers or 480 miles of range from the electric luxury sedan, just barely beating out the best Tesla Model S on the optimistic WLTP test method. The EQS 450 will serve as the base model for the lineup, offering 329 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque, thanks to that rear axle mounted electric motor. The EQS 580 ups the ante with an added front axle motor, giving it 516 ponies and 611 pound-feet, as well as a 0 to 60 time of just 4.1 seconds. A full-on AMG model, possibly called the EQS 73, will likely follow. Now, if you step aboard the EQS expecting it to be a slightly revised S-Class, you're sorely mistaken. This is a completely bespoke, unique place to spend time, and it doesn't really share a whole lot with the S-Class, except for maybe the software skin for the MBUX system. First and foremost, as soon as you get in, you realize that there's this wonderful high center console with some really delicately accented wood trim. A center console obviously isn't really necessary for an EV because there isn't a transmission that takes up space right here, but Mercedes still wanted it to feel very comfortable and inviting. They wanted it to be a little bit close quartered, but not necessarily confining in the least. As you would expect of any S family vehicle, the EQS also lives and dies by its rear seat. Now, because it's an EV, they were really had a lot of architectural freedom to make a lot of space back here, and it very clearly shows. Both of these front seats are set for me. I'm about six feet tall. And as you can clearly see, I have so much legroom. I, I honestly can't think of another vehicle aside from like a Maybach or a limousine that I've sat in that has this much space in back. Mercedes-Benz isn't going to offer the EQS with a two plus two seat configuration. So you're always gonna have a middle seat here, but you're honestly probably not missing too much. You get all the same features as you might get in an executive package kind of vehicle. From door to door is a massive full width Mercedes-Benz user experience hyperscreen. Yes, that is actually what they're calling it. There's a border of ambient lighting that runs around the edge and that's because the hyperscreen floats ever so slightly above the surface of the rest of the dash. 
and it also overlaps a little bit into the door panels, which is just beautiful. It just shows a very thoughtful and clever attention to detail with the EQS. And it is a 56 inch wide pane of curved glass that houses three individual screens. One for the driver's instrument cluster, one for the center touch screen, and an additional infotainment screen for the passenger. The biggest is the center touch screen, which as you can see, follows the contours of the hyperscreen's dashboard shape. It comprises everything that you might find in another Mercedes-Benz vehicle, the MBUX infotainment package, but unlike some of those, it also includes a so-called zero layer that you can access with a long hold of the home button. In the zero layer, the map is the default background of the screen with some additional tiles that pop up. There's always going to be a media tile in the middle, for example, and accessing the vehicle settings from here are always gonna be up top. However, beyond that, it really kind of depends on how you use your vehicle for what this screen is going to look like. For example, I have to call into a meeting every Monday at 8 a.m. and if I'm out on the road when that meeting appears on my calendar, the Mercedes-Benz user experience will suggest a tiny little tile over here that has the number of the meeting that I call into. It's a really clever way of integrating your entire schedule into the vehicle's infotainment package without necessarily forcing a lot of distraction and a lot of menu use. There are a lot of unique comfort features that are new to the EQS, including some sound of the sea and forest glade and summer rain nature motifs, which animate the background of the screen and play some soothing ocean sounds through the speakers. Some other automakers have this, most notably Hyundai, but this is a really immersive way of doing it with ambient lighting and a center display, as well as sound and um, ionizer and scenting and stuff like that. Now we're on the passenger side and we get to play with this second auxiliary infotainment touchscreen that can only be operated by the passenger. In fact, if you're driving down the road and the system senses the driver looking over too much at the screen, it'll sound a warning. And then eventually if the driver continues to ignore that warning, it will turn off this display for the time being. It's a really interesting way that Mercedes-Benz is trying to combat driver distraction while still including lots of technology. This touch screen works the same as the rear seat passenger infotainment systems with a lot of the same functionality. For example, I can be the perfect co-pilot and offer my driver a hot relaxing back massage and activate his seats as well as turning mine on as well. Um, you can adjust the seat kinetics, everything else for both the driver and front passenger and you can even play your own audio either through Bluetooth speakers or you can pitch it over to the center display and the driver can approve or deny your request. While the Tesla Model S was the first palatable electric car for the masses, the Mercedes-Benz EQS forges its own path with a space pod exterior, cutting edge technology, and capable luxury to go along with its impressive estimated range. In fact, it's so distinctive that it might become the EV status symbol when it goes on sale. Pricing is still under wraps, but the EQS should arrive in dealers this fall. We can't wait to tell you more about it, so stay tuned.